I'm going to go ahead and show you this AXF file and how it would function on a GPS device running ArcPad. You start off with uh, several feature classes in ArcMap and then you, assuming that you have ArcPad installed on your uh, computer running ArcMap, you check everything out to an a AXF file. Then you load this AXF file on your mobile device using ArcPad. And what this does is this generates several different templates that you can now do data collection on. If I go over to the quick capture um, bar, you can see that I have the biospecies point information, I have the bird nest point information, the update point, the habitat points, uh, the update habitat points, the mortality points, and then different uh, polygons that I can add using this AXF file running on ArcPad. So for example, I'm going to go ahead and let's say I'm doing a bird nest survey. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this one icon. The icons of course can be customized or changed and I'm going to go ahead and place it where, um, where the bird nest is located. Obviously, if this was on a GPS device, I would use the GPS position. The first thing that you have is an ID number. This ID number would be unique to the survey that you're currently doing, and it would probably start at 1 and then auto increment after that. The TD number would be something that Edison provides and would be unique to that individual project um, that you can then tie all this information back to. Ideally, this would be like some type of individual project ID number. This could be a drop down list, or it could be something given to the individual biologist in which they would have to type in. Right now, we just decided to put NA for the speed of efficiency and kind of go on to where kind of most of the coding, coding is occurring. The species type is obviously bird because we're dealing with a bird nest. So the subspecies would be any one of these different drop-down menus or uh, uh, drop-down items. The reason for these drop-down items is to drastically narrow the list of individual species for birds uh, whose nests that we're trying to capture. So we'll go ahead and click on Flycatcher. It's going to go ahead and gray out subtype 2 because there are no additional subtypes. And now if I click on common name, I can see that this, is, this list is significantly less than the over 400 uh, individual species of birds that we might have. So I'll go ahead and click on the black Phoebe, and then I can see that it auto-populates the scientific name. I have other attributes that are associated with the, this, my nest survey, such as on page two, I can check on individual status, I can change the observation time and date. Uh, the UTM information right now this will more than likely be filled in after uh, the information has already been collected. Ideally, we could probably change this to decimal degrees because this is kind of the raw value that the GPS unit is collecting. But if we decided to, we wanted to put UTM east and, easting and northing in zone 11, the best way to do that would probably be an arc map after you're done. Individual GPS device, uh, is default to NA, but it could be any one of these items. So you could say, you know, Garmin unit of some sort. The page three has other uh, notes and informations. Again, these are all the default values. I can even say if an ESA has been established, the nest status, um, or other types of domains uh, that have been established with the file based geodatabase. At the very end, one thing that we did notice is that this extra info is a required field, so I do have to type in some type of value um, in here before hitting OK. And we go ahead and hit OK. Now currently, right now, it's selected, but you can see there's the information that we collected. If I wanted to ID it, I could see that here it is. It was a bird, it was a flycatcher, and it was a black phoebe. If I wanted to, I could actually change this as well uh, on the fly. Uh, in the field if I, if I made a mistake. I'm going to go ahead and show another example and this just shows how multiple um, uh, subtypes can be used. So I'm going to go ahead and collect the mortality information. So let's say at a specific location I found a dead plant. Not likely, why would I collect it? But again, I'm showing how everything is kind of linked together. 
So if I pick the uh, species type as plant, then the subspecies type I can pick as dicots, and then I do have a secondary subspecies type, I can pick Dudleya. And now I can finally pick the name. Again, the reason for the subtype one and two is to narrow down this list of names. The amount, the number of uh, plant names is, is significant. And to have every common name for all the plants to scroll through, um, it would take a long, long time. And so this process works a lot quicker. With additional customization and coding, we can make uh, quick picks or uh, some other type of you know write-in where basically, if I pick it, you know if I pick this species this one time, it'll auto-populate the next time I uh, 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 I collect uh, the same point. Again, this information there's a specific information that's related to the individual mortality information. You know, cause of death is unknown, but I can pick electrocution. Again, these are just other drop downs that are associated with the domains. Any type of coding in here, we could put individual uh, dependencies on, on them uh, and kind of rearrange the structure of these forms, which is completely customizable. Again, this extra info information is required, so I do have to put in some type of value in there before it'll accept the point. So now my now it's currently selected, but if I select off of that, I can see that I collect other mortalities point location. Again, with further customization, we can go ahead and really customize the form, but the overall look and feel is pretty much the same uh, as what you see here. Again, the advantage of uh, exporting everything out to an AAXF file is now you can go ahead and make multiple copies of this and send it out to wh whomever you need to when they're finished, they can send you back a single file that then can be checked back into the master database.